You know, I try to begin a video with an exciting clip at the beginning, but when you switch on a solar power system and it gets exciting, you've done something horribly wrong. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Season 2 of my YouTube channel, and today I'm going to be showing you my DIY solar battery backup system for the house. Well, not the whole house. It ain't that big yet, but maybe in the future. I've always had an interest in generating my own electricity, and around here I have opportunity... <laughs> Uh, we'll call it that. I have opportunity to use it. See, here in the Northeast we have some pretty brutal winters, and we always have at least one storm that comes through and knocks out the power for days at a time. And when that happens, yeah, we got an emergency generator, but it's really noisy and expensive to run all the time. So instead, I have a little battery backup system that I use that can charge phones, run some basic lights, stuff like that. My first venture into generating my own electricity was to build a windmill. Now I had a lot of fun, and it's an ongoing experiment because it always finds a new way to break. Last winter it had broken and was broken when the first storm hit. It turned out to be a three day long power outage right around Thanksgiving weekend. To complicate the situation, I had one kid sick and who was throwing up and, you know, it's good to have 24 hour light just to see what you're throwing up into, just to make sure you hit the bucket, you know? So I went into emergency MacGyver mode. I had a 100 watt solar panel in the garage and out in my little sailboat, a solar controller and the battery which I could use to create a battery backup. Since the windmill was in its usual defunct state, I leaned the solar panel up against the windmill frame and attached the windmill wires to the panel. Those ran back to my basement where I put the battery and the solar controller for the boat. I hooked it all up and it worked very well. Solar is very effective at creating power when you have direct sunlight. And every time we get a big storm in the winter time, we end up with sunny but cold days afterward. This was the point where I knew solar would be the way to go for this backup system. And so this fall I decided to upgrade that system and make it a bit bigger. So I began by purchasing a 4-pack of eco-worthy 100 watt solar panels from Amazon. I also selected and purchased a controller, which I'll talk about a little bit later. With those on the way, I made a trip to the hardware store and picked up some 2x4s and a couple of other things to make the frames to hold the solar panels. I had decided to put these solar panels on the back wall of the barn. It faces directly south, and it kind of shields the panels from all the wind that we get. I also helped justify this decision in my head by saying, well, it's going to make a great awning to keep the water from rolling right in through the doors of the barn. There are no eaves on the barn wall. And with the materials in hand, I got to work. Now at this latitude, the optimum angle for a fixed solar panel is 45 degrees. That's perfect. Not only does it mount well to the side of the barn, but also the angle is steep enough to shed snow. I also decided to place them low enough where I could reach them with a push broom to help sweep snow off during the winter. The structure is simple. I'm using three wooden triangles to hold up two 12 foot 2x4s to create the frame for the solar panels. The solar panels themselves will fit right next to each other to create kind of an awning. I needed a way to fasten these solar panels down and I didn't really like all the options for the through bolting hardware with the way the frames are built and all that. But these solar panels are framed with C-channel aluminum. And so I devised a plan that I would have metal tabs hanging off of the 2x4 and you'd simply put the solar panel down on the 2x4 and then slide it downhill on the slope to clip those metal tabs inside the rim around the solar panel. On the bottom I would have more of these metal tabs that I would slip inside the frame of the solar panel and then screw to the wooden frame that holds them. For this I bought a section of galvanized L-channel with holes already in it and then cut a bunch of sections to make a bunch of L-brackets. These I screwed on to the upper 2x4 before I put it on because there would be no room to get a screwdriver or anything in there once the 2x4 is mounted on the triangular frames. The ones on the lower edge would be very easy to reach. I'll put those on last. Ignore my brother's truck right there. He was doing some engine work on it and I wasn't patient enough for him to finish before I went and did this project. But he kindly volunteered. No, actually he... Uh, I, I just kind of roped him into helping me with this part of the project since he was there, you know. I like calling him my little brother because it's sort of ironic. I hung the triangular frames first with wood screws then with lag bolts running into the big beams behind the sheathing on the outside of the barn. 
In this day and age of power tools, using a ratchet always feels like it takes forever. Then came the crosswise 2x4s, accompanied by the usual stimulating conversation with my brother. They'd come up with a way to make their own knobs. Then as the sun was getting lower in the sky, it was time to put the solar panels on. The first one went on easily, and the lower frame clip worked exactly as I'd planned, which makes me feel intelligent. From here on out, it was just a process of unboxing the solar panels and putting them up. This was a very satisfying process, except for one of the solar panels that didn't fit right. I didn't quite measure correctly on a couple of the metal brackets, but some brute force and bending did the trick. Then I just had to snap the wires together, as all the panels had MC4 connectors already installed. And here it is with my five panels installed. You'll notice the one doesn't match. That's the Renogy panel that I had before. Its dimensions are different, but the electrical specifications are close enough that I think it'll work just fine with this array. The keen observer will see that I've got some bare frames sticking out the end of the solar panels. Well, that's because I wanted space to add more solar panels, should I choose to in the future, as well as I built this frame so I could lengthen it. I mathed out that this thing could actually hold about 2 kilowatts worth of panels, if I were to go that far. We'll see how this goes. This is kind of a pilot project. If it's wildly successful, well, I'm going to make it bigger. If I do, I hope to convert this little leaning shed over into a powerhouse. It has nothing in it right now, and it's disused, but it's nicely built, and kind of cute the way it leans. I measured it. It doesn't lean any further each year, so I don't think it's actually falling over. I think it just settled. Either way, it would make a perfect outside powerhouse. That would be nice, because I could also put my emergency generator in there. That thing is noisy, but I'd like to keep it out of the weather. Which is nice for storage, but even nicer if you have to clean the carburetor out in the middle of the winter because, well, that's what happens with carburetors when they sit in cold weather. Now getting back to the point of this video, there's more to the system than just solar panels. There's also a solar controller. The solar controller does multiple jobs. See, a 12 volt solar panel is going to produce well above 20 volts open circuit. And as you draw more power from the solar panel, or more amperage, the voltage will drop. There's a point where the amperage increase and the voltage drop cross, and that's called the maximum power point. And that is where your panel will actually produce the most electricity. On the average 12 volt panel I've seen, that's usually somewhere between 18 and 20 volts. So to control this solar array, I've selected the Lytime 60 amp MPPT controller. Now, MPPT, what that means is Maximum Power Point Tracking, which is exactly what I just described. It finds the point where the solar panel produces the most juice. So the input side of this solar controller is a variable input voltage buck converter that takes a higher voltage, whatever that voltage needs to be to get maximum power out of the panel, and steps it down to whatever the battery needs. Now that's the output side. This controller manages its output to create the right charging conditions for the battery it's attached to. It even has settings for many different types of battery. My initial plan, of course, was to charge a lead-acid battery that I pulled out of my boat. After pulling the battery out of my boat, I found out that it was absolutely dead. Like, wouldn't take a charge anymore. So being faced with needing a new battery anyway and realizing that I've gotten a maximum of three years out of any lead-acid battery these days, I don't think they make them like they used to, I decided to go with a lithium battery. And since I'm kind of on a budget but wanted a name that is recognizable, not uh, just one of those off-brands where someone hit the keyboard and said, yeah, that's a business, I purchased an eco-worthy 100 amp hour battery. It arrived shortly, and I was really excited to see some output from this array. Now, I need to build out the electronics properly. It needs proper switches and proper fusing and all that stuff. But just for a test, I figured I'd keep an eye on it while I tested it, and the sun was out. I set it up. For a load, I used a Renogy 1000 watt inverter my brother gave me. The wires on it were in kind of shabby shape, and I think they were too small. So I made cables for everything. For this I used 6 gauge marine grade cable and crimped some connectors on there with a hydraulic crimper that I have. Um, 
I've made a lot of battery cables, and so I invested in one of these things. It's pretty nice to put six tons of crimp on a connector. You know it's going to work. And with these connected, I gleefully threw the switch and started my initial test. And got about 300 and some odd watts. I would say that's pretty good, considering that there was a very light cloud layer above. Like, it almost looked like a sunny day, but wasn't quite. Not bad out of a 500 watt array. Now, as I continued to watch it through the day, we got some really good clear patches, and I got about 420 watts out of it. Given the time of year, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I tried running my computer off of it, but soon it turned out it wasn't enough load to actually challenge the system. So I hooked up a small space heater. That was pretty cool, getting heat out of, uh, well, for free, pretty much. Now, obviously, this setup is somewhat under-batteried. It can fully charge that 100 amp hour battery in a couple of hours on a good day. So I certainly could use more storage in the system. But again, this is a pilot project. I'm finding out how well it works to see if I want to expand this. Now for the electronics portion. I decided to build it on a board, and I found a piece of OSB in the barn. It was pretty much a half sheet. And as anyone who's ever worked on electrical inside of a space that someone else designed, you know that there's never enough space. So I decided to use the whole thing. This board will not only have the solar controller and the inverter, but I'm also adding a thousand watt battery charger that I got for free, actually. Um, pretty nice unit. I'll control this with a relay, and that will allow me to make it so that it'll never let the battery get dead, but it'll prioritize the solar so that I'm actually using energy the solar is producing rather than energy from the grid. This battery charger is rated at 1000 watts, so I hooked it up to try it out and it was charging about 43 amps, which was excellent given the battery was pretty close to full, so I didn't expect, you know, absolutely full output, but that was pretty close. The area of the house that I chose to work in because the floor was big and open um, was not very well lit, so I apologize for the dark camera shots here. But as the daylight faded, I spent hours positioning things, screwing them down, putting all the components in place. First the solar controller, inverter, then the battery charger, then the relay to control it. After that went on a shunt, which I'll use to track the Gozenda Gozada, you know, how much flow is going in and out of the battery which I can also use to determine the battery level. It's more reliable than just checking the voltage because, of course, depending on how much current is being drawn, the battery voltage is going to change because of internal resistance. I got to use a number of tools in my proverbial toolbox on this build, including 3D printing. The main switch I'd selected was a panel mount switch, so I needed a standoff for that. I also had a DIN rail relay that I wanted to use for a dump load and I needed a DIN rail mount to put on there. So, 3D printed that too. That's what those outlets are all about right there. The dump load is a outlet that will turn on when the battery's full, but we still have plenty of solar coming in. This will help me utilize the panels fully, no matter what the size of my battery bank. Right after this is when disaster struck. Not really disaster, but I'll show you. All right, my intention was to complete this project before installing it, but Woke up to the power out this morning, so it's getting pressed into service. Doesn't seem all that windy. Ah, anyway, power's out. Fortunately, the power outage only lasted a few hours, but I was able to get my coffee and then enjoy watching the battery recharge off the solar, since there was nothing else working. The internet went down too. After the power came back on, I was able to watch the charger try and charge the battery. Now, it turned out that the wires I used were a bit too small a gauge. They look pretty big, but they actually just have really thick insulation. They're solar panel wires. So they started getting a bit warmer than I was comfortable with. Not like hot, but still too much. So I went in and replaced those with dual 12 gauge wires. This will work just fine. After that, it was time to sit down and make a little circuit board that would allow this system to integrate with Home Assistant, as well as automatically control the charger and the dump load relays. I did this with one of my favorite little chips to use, the Xiao ESP32C3, which is kind of a tiny Arduino package. The A to D converters are not super accurate on it, which is something that I ended up fighting with quite a bit. But I got it working as good as I needed it to. And then I finished routing the wires on the board and hooked it all up. 
The first power up, as it should be with a solar power system, was very anticlimactic. Again, if it gets exciting with solar power, then you've done something wrong. Apparently, I did this right. I spent hours tweaking my Arduino program software and the numbers to account for temperature drift and other things that happen with this little board. I think I'm going to have to make a version 2 of this control board that is much more stable and reliable. But for now, I think it'll work. And there you go, my solar battery backup system. I don't know how well it's going to perform yet. I've got numbers and assumptions, but we'll find out how they play out. In the meantime, we both have to wait for data to be collected. So, I'm Joe, signing off.